Say hello to TikTok's saddest degenerate, Nova Online. An internet lolcow who embodies the dark underbelly of online fame, where shock value trumps substance, and the line between reality and performance is all but obliterated. On a platform known for its bizarre and often outrageous content, Nova has carved out a niche that even the most seasoned TikTokers find disturbing. While most creators opt for dance challenges, comedy skits, or lip-syncing to catchy tunes, Nova's content takes a decidedly darker turn. So, who is Nova Online? He is a 20-year-old unemployed man-child who was born and raised in Idaho. Although he is most famously known as Nova Online, his real name is actually Gabriel Scrivener Gage. Just like any other internet lolcow, Nova is a self-proclaimed content creator who has been trying to get famous for a very long time. He first rose to massive meme status when he posted this Wingstop review video. Trying Wingstop for the first time. Cajun seasoned fries. Okay. Mango habanero wings. Oh, wow. Okay, these are very, very spicy. Oh, wow. Dr. Pepper. Oh, it slaps. 10 out of 10. Lemon pepper wings. Mm. Lemon pepper wings are absolutely stunning. They're amazing. 9 out of 10. In the beginning, he just wanted to be a massive food critic. He would make videos trying out different food items, just glazing himself with junk every day. However, this initial era of Nova is what we can consider fairly harmless. As we go deeper into the video, you'll discover some more disturbing things such as weird fetishes and serious allegations. So buckle up, because we're going to take a deep dive into the life of Nova online. Most people know him as a TikTok degenerate, Nova Online, but very few know that he actually started his online quote-unquote career when he was very young. He started posting videos on YouTube almost 8 years ago, when he was still a teenager. He uploaded his first ever video on a channel called Magic Wizard. The videos that he initially posted were usually daily vlogs or some really poorly made gaming streams. At that time, no one could have guessed that his seemingly harmless content would reveal something much darker and sinister. Even though in these initial vlogs, he is quite young and seems just like another normal kid who is trying to mimic his favorite YouTuber, these initial videos give a lot of insight into his personality. It's extremely sad when you compare his younger version to what he became later on. Now, Nova posted on his channel for a while, but he wasn't gaining a lot of views. So, he decided to change his course of action. In June 2020, he created another channel called The Novine Universe. This is his main channel where he posted for a long time and still continues to do so. However, the first videos that he posted on this new channel would still not fall into the category of disturbing. He mainly posted Minecraft and Fortnite content or even simple dance videos. But this was still not enough for Nova. He was thirsty for the spotlight. He wanted to get people's attention, and that's when he made his TikTok account. Let's just say, this is where his downward spiral began. He would just appear on TikTok saying whatever random stuff that he wanted to. As we discussed earlier, he particularly found his niche in food reviewing, which led to the infamous Wingstop review video. The video went viral for one and only one reason. That being his immaculate meme appeal. Everything from his very noticeable lisp to his cringe-worthy eating style made him a joke. People started reposting his videos, making fun of his demeanor, and teasing him for his content. Like... What they put in this thing that makes it so good? Is it better than Jack in the Box? Better than any chicken sandwich I've ever had. 12 out of 10. That was down at Youth Code Wizard for two times already. The Nova haters have just struck on a full-on cyber war against the Nova Stars. I will not stand for this. Nova Stars, do everything you can. 
We have the power of Usada Pakora and God on our side. Stay strong. Shine crumble cookies for the first time. First up, we got lemon poppy seed. As you can see in these videos, he was undoubtedly a very meme content worthy person, and that sometimes resonates with the TikTok audience. So his videos started gaining more and more views. But in reality, it was just a mix of people trying to pick on him, and him also just blindly divulging his personal information on a whim. All it did was give him a fake sense of personality, which fed into his delusions. Nova started feeling like he was someone, even if that someone was an overeating loser who made a mockery of himself. One of his videos went particularly viral in which he reviewed a can of orange monsters during church. Charlie Ultra Sunrise Monster Energy, and if you're wondering why I'm not at home, I'm at my church for Bible Camp. We're just waiting to board a bus to go to Cusick. So... We're trying Ultra Sunrise Monster Energy in the morning before we go. It's 7.46 a.m. First impression. Smells like orange juice. Alright, cheers. And that's kind of what it tastes like. Like, this tastes like orange juice with a hint of tangerine. This is actually pretty good. I'll give it an 8 out of 10, just because it's not as good as Ultra Blue. Anyway, Dallas, uh, use code wizard for two times running buzz. You might not see me for four days. Despite of people making fun of him, at this point, things were looking good for him. And by good, we mean that he was overeating. Making his usual food review content and just gladly getting trolled. However, this face didn't last for long. It's a no-brainer looking at his appearance and his actions that he was an adamant Discord user. So, he made a server for his fans, or Nova Stars, as he likes to call them. He interacted with his fans on this server who were basically just trolls. These people did not actually like Nova. They were there just because they wanted to dig deeper into his life, and Nova was stupid enough to give everything away for even a few seconds of attention. In the beginning, he used the Discord server as a way of getting to know his audience and talking about his life. But his attention-seeking habit eventually got to him. So Nova started posting some really disturbing things, exposing himself as a and a diaper-wearing Yes, you heard that right. He would say some really stupid and weird things on his Discord like, I really want that messy diaper today. Furthermore, he would tell people things like he woke up wet in the middle of the night. He also admitted a number of times how happy it makes him to put a diaper on. This was just beyond cringe. At this point, it was getting disturbingly serious. His actions and his Discord posts all made it very evident that he has an age play kink. One thing that people were quick to notice was his age regression. Age regression is basically when a person mentally retreats to a younger age. In all ways, he believed that you're back at the point in your life and may exhibit childish behavior. But for Nova, it was more than just that. His age regression wasn't only limited to him acting like a child. It was an actual fetish that creeped a lot of people out. What's worse is that he had absolutely no shame parading his habit for everyone to see. He would post really deranged pictures of himself wearing kids' clothing, having a pacifier in his mouth, and cuddling with stuffed toys. But things just kept getting worse, because this guy started posting pictures of himself in diapers. He also posted a bunch of other things on his Discord account like, It's not my fault I'm attracted to kids. So this guy didn't only have the guts to accept his in front of the world, but he also had the audacity to actually defend it. This wasn't only gross, but also really concerning to some people. His TikTok feed also showed some really cringe content that he viewed and liked. This should have been a clear red flag, and while people did notice this, it was mainly used for trolling Nova. But to be honest, it was a clear indication that something worse was about to happen if people kept fueling this guy's actions, who was evidently mentally unstable and would do anything for just a few seconds in the spotlight. If you talk about Nova Online's personal life, 
There's actually not a lot that's known about him from an early age, except that he was born in Idaho and that he actually started his YouTube way earlier when he was only a kid. What we do know, however, about his family is that he lived with his uncle. Now, his relationship with his uncle is something that's talked about quite a lot. This said uncle has been mentioned on his account a bunch of times, by him and also by his enemies like Tofia. To put it into simple words, his dynamic interaction with his uncle was very weird. It can be described as a love-hate relationship. You see, he has freaked out about his uncle a handful of times during gaming streams and his live sessions. For instance, this particular stream in which he is just losing it, saying about anything he wants. I miss all my uncle said, and then he went off a fun rant. Done. Okay, you. Yes, they said that. No, no. He would also consistently argue with his uncle and complain about him a lot. On the other hand, he also can't really handle it when someone else says anything about his uncle. An example of this is when his uncle was called out for being racist which sent Nova into a rampage about how no one can talk bad about him. A lot of his fans assume that this weird attachment to his caretaker stemmed from something much more serious, probably a deep-rooted insecurity. You see, Nova's father actually died when Nova was very young. This was a huge loss for Nova at that time. Of course it was. However, he was still quite young at that time to process this shock in a healthy way. So, yeah, he pretty much grew up without a father figure. It can also be because he was always deprived of a father's love, so he saw his uncle as a mentor. But at that time, his inherent nature stopped him from forming a healthy relationship with anyone. However, his behavior towards his uncle was definitely a sign that he was not mentally stable. He was really hungry for attention shifting his content to making it more and more insane with each passing day. And sure enough, things took a very dark turn when he was exposed for sleeping on a video call with a 14-year-old girl and meowing for her. If you haven't seen this particular video yet, then you should really consider yourself lucky because there's only one way we can describe it, and that is truly sickening. Up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky twinkle twinkle will die how i wonder what you are you did so great oh i love your singing for those who follow him online, they are aware that he doesn't talk or behave like this in his daily life. And if this wasn't weird enough for you, there are more clips from this video call that are just truly hard to watch. In the video, the girl was asking Nova to do things like meowing and barking for her, making it even more sickening and cringe. Nova? <laughs> Nova? Oh my god. Can you meow? Meow? Yeah. Can you purr? Yeah. And the worst of all, he was asking this girl some really disturbing questions that he shouldn't be asking a 14 year old. For instance, this. Question, but how often do you it is clear from this video that he was basically trying to riz up this little girl. Know that at this time, Nova was probably 19 or 18 years old, and this is certainly not an age to wear diapers or weirdly flirt with 14-year-olds. But this is not where things end. 
As is the case with a lot of these TikTok degenerates, when they're confronted about something wrong, they completely lose it. Hence, it was really not surprising that Nova also tried to defend himself. He appeared on a live after these allegations and attempted to clear his name. Hating on small doctors, just trying to be fun, but all you want to do is falsely accuse them of crap they never did. Y'all are being legitimate. Have you ever seen an episode of Darman? You would know to not be an to people you don't know nothing about. Don't judge people before you get to know them. He had the audacity to actually come live and other people. He said that people were falsely accusing him and that the video was photoshopped. However, what he didn't think about was that he had been leaving hints like this for ages. For example, confessing to wearing diapers and wetting his bed. Proof my photoshopped. It's been proven. You're in timeout for like five minutes. Then I'll turn back on speaking privileges. Maybe. Now you better effing behave. You guys need to get a job instead of wasting your f***ing on small TikTokers. Those are clearly effing photoshopped. And if I can, I'll get my effing lawyers into this. You guys have no effing father. It was just hard to believe Nova, especially when he has been notoriously known for doing some really cringe stuff, like posting pictures of dirty diapers and acting like a child. But no. Instead of realizing his actions, he went on denying everything. What's really infuriating about it is that he thinks he has the right to take other people's speaking privileges. He obviously thinks that he is so infallible that he can prevent people from calling him out and continue doing whatever weird fetishes he is into. This is you, and this hand is me. After this, things just kept getting worse and worse for him, to the point where he was kicked out of the church where he made his popular Monster Orange review video. People actually started contacting the church and informing them all about Nova's tendencies. The church incident led to the single most legendary moment of Nova's online career, a full-blown meltdown that still lives rent-free in our brains. Nova went on a furious live stream where he, like always, blamed other people for making his life difficult and calling them jobless losers. I'm at my breaking point. Your effing trolls who have nothing else better to do! You guys have anything else better to do than check out your At this point, people were not following Nova only for his cringe appearance, but for the drama. They were hooked to his content because they wanted to know what would happen next and whether the trolls could actually push this degenerate even further down the rabbit hole of disgust. Therefore, the trolls just kept going on and on, trying to bring Nova down. During this time, his Discord server, which was probably his only place of refuge where he could say whatever he wanted, was also raided on several occasions. Among the people who raided his Discord account, one stood out pretty much. This guy was called Skulger, who got under Nova's skin the deepest. Once you start looking to the source of all the information related to Nova, you'll realize that it was actually this guy who provided some of the most sensitive information about him. He was also personally involved in raiding the Discord server. And this was also the time when Nova got properly doxxed and people discovered information like his name and his address, which further pushed him down a deep end to the point where he claimed to have had fits. If Nova was any sane person, he would leave the internet for good after all this trolling. But we can all agree that he was not someone who would exactly fit under the category of even remotely sane. Nevertheless, he did decide to take a break from TikTok. But we all know how this goes, it's never for good, and people like him always come back with something much more sinister in store for the audience. This was true in Nova's case as well. But before we talk about his temporary disappearance, or disappointing reappearance to TikTok, another interesting tidbit that you should know about is this series of tweets made by a girl who claimed to have been in a choir with Nova back in middle school. She did not provide a name, but she did mention a bunch of things about Nova, 
suggesting that he made all the girls feel awkward and made weird advances at them. She said in her tweet, In middle school, Nova and I were in choir together. He and I had multiple classes together too, all the way up until high school. I didn't want to be around him, he made me uncomfortable, but everyone told me I was being dramatic. He made awkward comments towards all the girls in our classes, things like commenting on our bodies, rating us on looks, and talking about his crushes he had on every girl he talked to. People told me it wasn't a big deal. She also said that when she reported this to the teachers, they said that he was autistic and really couldn't control his behavior. She even claimed that a teacher, in fact, used to egg him on. Furthermore, he revealed that when he was 12, Nova sang a very sexually explicit song and dedicated it to her. While this may sound like an average teenage guy, looking at his behavior in recent days, it makes a whole lot of sense. However, we don't really know for sure if this person was actually Nova's classmate or not, given that she didn't really provide a name and Nova never reacted to these tweets. Regardless, it still paints a very interesting picture, one that's very consistent with Nova's behavior right now. So when people started calling him out and after he lashed out during live, Nova disappeared from TikTok for quite a while. However, he did return with a cringe remake of his first ever Wingstop review video. A year ago today, I posted the video that boosted my whole TikTok career. And one year later, we are revisiting that exact order that I placed one year ago today. This is trying Wingstop for the first time recreated. To be clear, he was just trying to go back to normal with a clean slate, pretending that nothing ever happened. He thought he could just start making his cringe food reviews again, and no one would mention that he was once trying to flirt with a on video call. To his disappointment though, the internet doesn't forget that easily. So he was bound to slip again. It was just a matter of time. You would think that this should be enough to finish his so-called internet career. But no. He stuck around and surprisingly, so did his audience. During this time, he kept making a lot of pathetic videos doing gym. This in specific spiked up his views. People just found his boxing and gymming videos extremely hilarious. Now, if you really want to get into the entire Nova Online lore, there are some key people that you need to know about. The first one is this guy named Hiroshiman. Now, this guy is just as stupid as Nova Online. He actually went viral a few years ago during the whole Logan Paul debacle. If you're not aware, Logan Paul is a YouTuber slash TikToker who got cancelled by pretty much the entire internet for doing something really questionable. He and some of his friends went to the Aokigara Forest in Japan in 2017. The only problem with this trip was the choice of destination. You see, the Aokigahara Forest in Japan is a notorious spot. Logan Paul filmed himself finding the perpetrated body of a victim and also uploaded it to his channel. Um, I really hate to say this. I think there's someone hanging right there. Excuse me? And but this is, the, this is the thing. This, this is the thing that is now in our lives. We just experienced. How our lives unfold. There's no going back. I've seen things I can't unsee. We found a body. Yo! What the fuck? I gotta say, this is top five craziest things I've ever experienced in my life. Top five? Top one. This is the craziest thing I've ever experienced. This was very seriously disturbing content that surpasses even Nova Online. Needless to say, people were mad that he posted something like this on his channel, with some even accusing Logan Paul of deliberately visiting the forest in hopes of finding something like this to spike up his views. 
Now, Hiroshiman here had opinions about that. According to Hiroshiman, the guy whose corpse was found in the woods was actually lucky that he got to appear in one of Logan Paul's vlogs. Because I'm a Japanese maverick, I deserve to have a platform. And the guy who died should be lucky to be in Logan Paul's vlog. To get the idea of how horrible of a person he can possibly be, to say something so insensitive and senseless. In later years, Hiroshiman decided that he wanted to drop out of college and become a Mr. Beast style celebrity. And what exactly did he do to achieve that? He made an anime. He got a bunch of other idiots to come together and create an anime called Black the Anime. This anime was completely horrible and immediately got cancelled. Now, FYI, the first episode was so bad that he had to make an apology video for uploading it. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, no, no jokes or whatever, bro. I just want to say, I want to say straight up that I, I just, I effed you guys over and I feel horrible. I want to come up with millions of excuses why the anime didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. But all I want to say is exactly one week time, I'm sure everything is going to be fixed. Not only was it very crudely drawn, but was also extremely racist. Despite this, Hiroshiman was actually proud of his creation. So he didn't stop. He cashed that anime as much as he could. He also made a few song albums and a movie based on the anime. But he didn't stop here either. He actually went on and made another anime called Ohio the Anime, which is exactly what his section has been leading up to. Hiroshiman used some of the most controversial personalities from the internet to promote this anime and one of those people was Nova. He didn't only get a villain speaking role in the anime, but he was also a director in charge of storytelling and creative decisions. Hello, this is the Ohio the Anime Director. We would like to present the story for Ohio the Anime. The main character, Jamal, along with his class, travels into one of the most mysterious places in the world, also known as Ohio. He has to face enemies like me, Nova, and the Ohio President and Ohio Queen. Follow for more updates on Ohio the Anime. Me and my best friend Kyle is making an anime where I'm the main character. He's in prison and I'm the new leader. We offer products like manga. You can just imagine how horrible that anime has got to be if Nova is making the creative decisions. But things get way sketchy with this anime. It was actually a complete scam. When people started digging into it, they realized that you have to actually pay to work for them. A Discord user actually made a video about this revealing how Nova was probably paying Hiroshiman money to voice act in the show. It's a scam. Ohio the anime is a scam. Let me show you. Nearly all the videos on this TikTok account have the same sentiment in the description. Join the Discord server. Be a voice actor. I join the Discord server and the first thing I see is server subscriptions. And for a measly 10 bucks a month, you can be a side character. Oh, you, you don't want to be a side character. Gotcha. Completely understandable. For $30 a month, you can be a main character. I am not a professional voice actor by any metric, but I can tell you this. I've voice acted long enough to know that this stuff never happens. You don't pay to get a role. What about the auditioning process? And if you check their most recent videos on their platform, apparently 
they've been firing some of their voice actors. Yeah, some of the voice actors have been let go. Cool. They got their money back, right? Yeah, this anime is super real because there's a real sense of originality and it doesn't like to repeat itself over and over and over. It doesn't matter if it's a joke. After this whole setup was revealed, Nova decided to do some damage control since he had been pretending that he got the role because of his talent. He made a video trying to explain what happened and announcing that he has cut ties with Ohio the anime. Hey y'all, it's Ann Nova Kadri. Um, about two to four weeks ago, I cut ties with Ohio the anime. I tried to make an explanation about it, but um, TikTok... Um, took down the video without informing me, so um, not a lot of people know what happened. So I'm going to explain a full-length YouTube video of exactly what happened with Ohio the anime and... This marks just another stupid stunt pulled by Nova in his online career. It's very evident from this incident that Nova is not really known for making smart decisions. Another example of this is him calling out the infamous internet lol cow to fear, which actually backfired on him pretty badly. Also known as to fear Chu. This person is very similar to Nova himself, and so they both got views by degrading and making themselves the laughing stock. To fear started on TikTok by making some really questionable content. She used to post her signature mafia boss daughter videos, which basically included her pretending to be the daughter of a mafia boss. But if you should know anything about Tofia, it's that she's completely obsessed with Asian men, to the point where she continuously fetishes them. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Asian boys are hot. Hey, how you feeling? My eye hurts. Oh yeah, which one? Cute. I want coffee. What's the magic word? Get me some coffee? Please. Actually, the magic word was lotion, but I'll accept your please because you got a booboo eye. Overall, her content was in league with Nova when it came to utter and sheer cringe. Another thing that you should know about her is that she is very much known for her disturbing and insane family. Her father, Donald Fitzgerald Slidell, also known as Papa Chu by her followers, is actually bipolar. He supports his family with the disability checks that he gets and is also a con artist setting up a fraudulent bank in an attempt to scam people. And there are also far worse things about him that you'll discover if you dig a little deeper. For instance, he would constantly say in his live streams that if he had his way, he would make the legal age 16. He was also seen flirting with random people during his live streams. There's so much more about him that we won't go into detail about right now, since this video is not about him anyway. But what's disturbing about this whole thing is that instead of condemning her father for doing these things, Tofia would constantly glorify him as a mafia boss. In addition to this, she also frequently argued with her mother during live streams and even physically attacked her once. Talking about the mama too, let's just say she's a very interesting character in Tofia's story. She often appeared on live saying whatever she wanted, doing gross and disgusting things and getting mad at Papa Chu for flirting with random people online. Something. And he's gonna deny that he said it too. Sophia put peanut butter on her crotch. To her, she would lick it. Okay. Mom, stop! Does me. that say? I don't really like coffee. I'm gonna be honest, if it's coffee, Mom, you didn't even say excuse me. Meh. Sophia is a obese. Mom, I don't want to hear that. Honestly, this is a complete definition of an insanely dysfunctional family. However, Tofia's and her mother's relationship dynamic is something that is beyond cringe. It's just gross.
Tofia is also extremely disrespectful towards her viewers, constantly degrading them and getting into controversies. Many people had begun to dislike Tofia for her frequent e-begging, her refusal to get a job, her general arrogance, and her habitual lying. During her live streams, she has a tendency to go on long, self-righteous tangents that never include her being in the wrong. She often personally attacks individuals in her chats who try and debate her. Um, people love to jump at every opportunity to tell me to get a job like I'm going to go do that. I was advised I would make more money in the creativity beta program anyways than the creator fund. So let's just be totally honest that I'm going to be making bank and you're still going to be sitting here saying get a job. You're like those um what people consider nerds that sit at the computer trolling. You're that person. You know, keeping your hands warm in your pants with with potato chip crumbs all over your chest. Okay? You hide behind a fake profile. A green dog, which is jealous. Obviously, green is jealous. You got the green monster inside of you. You know, if you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. So no, I'm not going to get a job because I already have one. Tofia has also shown racist and insensitive behavior, particularly towards people of Mexican ancestry. She also displays colorist attitudes, proclaiming that she doesn't consider herself a burnt color in reference to skin tone. Tofia claims to be of a mixed African-American race and uses her race card in every argument. There are a lot of lore surrounding her and her insane family. We can make a separate video about her if you guys want. But for the title's sake, we won't get any more details about Tofia at the moment. Coming back to why her name is brought up in the story of Nova Online, they actually got a very aggressive beef. Nova is known to be Tofia's arch nemesis. She was brought up so many times during Nova's live streams that fans of both sides actually came together and started shipping them. The beef actually started from Nova's side when he decided to act woke and make a video about Tofia. In the video, he called Tofia out for being racist. It was really ironic since Nova himself was part of an anime production that was probably the most racist thing to ever exist on planet Earth. Although Nova was initially not affiliated with Tofia, an altercation would begin between the two when Nova created a call-out video and mocktail drink intended to make fun of her. This angered Tofia and triggered a response from her, the result causing a feud. Their interactions typically consist of accusations of being thrown back and forth. This is a message to Tofia. Guys, if you don't know who Tofia is, she is a um, TikToker that has a little less followers than me, but we pretty much make uh, similar content in a sort of way. Guys, Tofia is racist towards Mexicans, and she says horrible stuff about Asians. And Tofia, if you're watching this, I'm calling you out. This is not right. What you are doing is completely wrong, and everybody in this world should be equal. God said that all men are created equal, and therefore, we should all be equal. We should learn to get along in this world, and Tofia, you are not resembling that. So Tofia, if you're watching this, I cannot believe all the stuff that I have seen about you, and I'm sorry, but I'm no longer a fan of yours. What people found really hilarious about the entire video with Tofia was that, at the end of the day, it was Nova, a TikTok degenerate, calling out Tofia, another degenerate. This was a bizarre saga in which both of them accused each other of doing things that they themselves were responsible for as well. There was no end to it since both of them were completely wrong. However, it did begin a series of random videos in which they consistently smack talked about each other. Nova actually made a lot of content that was solely directed at Tofia. For example, his mocktail video. If you're not familiar with Nova's dumb content and don't know what mocktail videos are, let us enlighten you guys. These videos are basically a series in which Nova mixes up drinks and different syrups to create something bizarre and questionable. So in one of his mocktail videos, he decided to make a drink solely based on Tofia. As stupid as it sounds, it actually happened and this was Nova's weird way of taking revenge for Tofia's racism. 
Welcome to a brand new episode of Fat B-I-T-C-H Disease, aka Type 3 Diabetes. Alright, so we're gonna start off this mocktail with a little bit of disrespect towards Mama Chu and Brother Chu. A hint of racism and then saying it's not racist. A touch of framing on MG and I to cover up what she did. And a touch of this up here. Let's take a moment to admire that this looks exactly like swamp water. Alright, and there you have it. Tofia's <laughs> potion that she has tried. Let's try it out. Cheers. I'm gonna regret this. <laughs> that is if you think that Tofia would keep quiet about something like this, then you are definitely mistaken. She's not the kind to take anything from anyone. She's just like Nova in all possible ways. She goes on rambling about anything with no regard for anyone's feelings, and when she's confronted, she goes into a defensive mood, which is just being disrespectful towards everyone. So naturally, he had to clap back to his mocktail video. In response, she uploaded this video to her TikTok account. Anyways, and then you got Nova, right? Nova, you know, made that whole video with a drink. Making a mock drink about me and thinking that he dragged me. You didn't drag anyone. You should be dragging your uncle who's racist and also because I remember the post that your uncle posted during black or dur that I found out during Black History Month where he said um, if people are offended by this which was the Confederate flag then I'm offended by this which was a, bu a picture of a bunch of young black men standing together with their pants sagging and saying that he's offended by that and it was a very racist post and then come to find out somebody in the discord said that your uncle is also and what did you do? You raged? You said nobody, nobody talks about, cause you know, this is, this is, um, Nova, he rages like, like he rages, right? He gets angry all the time. This is the perfect example of the continuous back and forth that we were talking about. Nova accuses Sophia of being racist and in turn, she accuses Nova's uncle of racism. It's just a never-ending cycle of accusations. Once Sophia uploaded this video, Nova had to make a response. Of course, why not? This feud with Tofia was the only thing that was keeping his account going at the time. And surprisingly, people were giving them what they wanted, that is, views and engagement. Regardless, he did respond to these allegations against his uncle by not only making one video, but a hundred. One of these videos is this one in which Nova can be seen as a perfect example of being truly hypocritical and just overall dumb. He had his hoodie on saying a bunch of nonsense that really didn't make any sense to anyone. Just see for yourself. I know that a lot of y'all are comparing me to Sophia, but hey, at least I'm not a 28 year old f who still lives with their parents and has no job and barely does anything with their lives but do TikTok lives all day. At least I have a job where I work as a prep chef at a local restaurant and I'm actually making decent money off of it and at least I'm not lounging around doing Discord mod fat stuff all day. So basically, all of the things he was calling Tofia were actually just a description of himself. This people found really funny and ironic. Tofia, on the other hand, also made a bunch of videos about Nova. For instance, this one. He didn't even say what he wanted to say. He didn't even get to say what he wanted to say. They literally ran him off of di off of station head. Like he got so mad that he left. Was it you? Because I was. I'm sorry that I laughed a little. I giggled. But whoever did that, you 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 a menace to society. I'm gonna tell you that because. He could not handle what you was telling him, and he ran right off a of station head. He was like, F this, I'm leaving. I was just like, bro, and it was not me. I was just, I wanted to hear what he had to say. However, this pathetic excuse of a feud finally came to an end, which people were glad about because they were just tired of his back and forth. In April 2024, Nova made a video in which she proudly announced that Tofia and he actually resolved their dispute although we still can't see the reason why it started in the first place. 
To everyone's relief, it did come to an end. This was the last major controversy that Nova has been a part of. It wouldn't be wrong if we say that Nova has been involved in his fair share of controversies. But one question that people still continue to ask is, where is Nova online right now? As of now, Nova is still on TikTok and YouTube. One would think that after so many years of disrespecting chaos on the internet, he would finally take his leave and give the spotlight to one of the many other TikTok degenerates. But no, Nova's just not ready to give his crown to someone else. He continues to post on his TikTok and YouTube even now. After the whole Tofia thing finally came to a halt, he decided to shift his niche once again. He started posting a lot of fitness and gym content on his now-deleted TikTok account. In most of these videos, he would attempt only the slightest to lift some weight or do a deadlift, immediately giving up only a few seconds later. He would then celebrate in front of the camera like he has really achieved some milestone. This type of content is again another calculative step to gain more clout. Nova actually never does anything that wouldn't get him views. He started his TikTok career as a vlogger and gamer. But when we realized that he was only getting a handful of views, he decided to switch his content. That's when he started his life as an aspiring food critic. Luckily, it worked out well for him and he tried to stick to it. But when his video calls were leaked and people started accusing him of having age play king, he diverted everyone's attention by directing an anime that received enough backlash to convince him to start engaging in more aggressive content. And hence, the entire Tofia saga emerged on his account. To be fair, it did do enough to keep the audience entertained for a while. But soon enough, people got bored, so he had to switch it up again resulting in his more recent niche of gym and fitness. Overall, his personality has been questionable from the very beginning. His interactions with an age play kink made us question one very common trend among these internet lolcows and TikTok degenerates. Why do almost all of them use their so-called fame to talk to children? Nova always wanted attention, and once he got it, what did he do with it? Talk to a 14-year-old girl about some really that we cannot even mention here. The real question, however, is how long will it take for the internet to realize that these people are a danger to children and to themselves. Their content is really disturbing, which can influence the younger audience.